Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is handling of reference standards. In this video, let us understand various standards that are used in testing of pharmaceutical products. It is important to know the various terminology is used to identify each type of reference standard. Let us also understand how these standards are prepared, evaluated and certified. Reference standard. There are several reference standards that are required for routine analysis. They include compendial standard, a compendial standard is a standard that is provided by the certified regulatory agency or any other certified source. The compendial standards include USPRS, EPCRS, etc. USPRS means United States Pharmacopoeia Reference Substances. EPCRS means European Pharmacopoeial Commission of Reference Substances. They are also referred as current reference standards as a general practice. They are fully characterized for its chemical structure and for its potency. In-house standard. In-house standard is prepared by the pharmaceutical manufacturing company, purified, structurally evaluated and certified for its characteristics. The certification status is like that of the compendial standard. Generally, if there is no availability of compendial standard, in-house standards are prepared. But it is not necessary to have only compendial reference standards. If the in-house standard is equivalent to that of the compendial standard, it can be used for routine testing with documented justification. Identification standard. This generally is used for identification purposes. To match the retention time of the compound, this standard is used. This standard may also have identified typical potential impurities that are generated in, in the process in significant amounts. This establishes the presence or absence of such typical impurities in the product. Identification standards may be of API or intermediate. Internal standard is typically used to avoid variations in area counts that are possible for certain analytical techniques. This is also for typical GC analysis where higher temperatures are used for injector port. Because of the high temperature, there is a potential for evapora evaporation of the sample during injection. When internal standard is used in analysis, the ratio of the compound of the interest and the internal standard is considered to avoid errors and get consistent areas ratios. Raw material standard is typically procured from market from a reputed fine chemical manufacturer certified by evaluating the characteristics. The evaluation data is provided as a certificate of analysis printed on the label itself. Secondary standard is an economical version of the primary compendial standard or in-house standard. Also, many of the compendial standards are very expensive and may not be feasible to use for the routine purpose. But the secondary standard is even equivalent to the compendial standard. Let us see more. Let us see how evaluation is done. Compendial standards or in-house standards are also called primary reference standards. Such primary standards 
are handled in two phases. First is the characterization or structure elucidation. The following analytical techniques establish the chemical structure and mass of the substance unequivocally. Explicit information on the molecular structure will be established by these tests. These standards are fully characterized. The characteristics include appearance, identification by IR and or UV, identification by NMR, identification by mass spectrometry or elemental analysis. Any other applicable tests may also be performed. These tests fully establish the structure. All the data must be reviewed evaluated accurately and archived as information. UV visible spectroscopy provides information on absorbance of ultraviolet or visible light by chemical compounds which result in distinct spectra for specific compounds. IR provides detailed information on functional groups of the compounds. NMR provides very important data on spatial orientation, structural of the compound unambiguously. Mass provides molecular mass details and the elemental analysis provides data on the constituent elements in the compound. This establishes completely the structure elucidation of the compound. The second part of primary standard handling is certification. The characterized standard is certified. The certification includes assay by titration. Assay will give the content of the active compound in the reference standard. Generally, this is done by titration if there is an established method. Purity by HPLC or GC. Purity is quality to purity. This evaluation generally done by HPLC or GC. This information provides details of purity in qualitative terms and other potential impurities present in the compound. The material balance will be always 100%. Purity plus impurities will be equal to 100%. Residual solvents are LOD. Residual solvents test will provide information on potential solvent traces. When the assay is calculated for the product on dry basis, it is necessary to correct for LOD. So, this test is necessary. Water content by Carl Fisher. When the assay is calculated on anhydrous basis, KF correction is necessary. One important point to note here is when the final isolation or the process involves only water in final step, the LOD value and Carl Fisher value may be same as there is no potential for other organic solvents. Any other relevant specific tests, any other tests like polymorphism may also be done if applicable. Let us see the storage conditions and temperature of storage. The reference standards have to be stored in its original container with proper airtight seal. This is important to maintain the integrity of the standard. The seal should be tightly fixed after each use. The standard should be stored as recommended on the label of the standard. There are different storage conditions recommended for different standards depending upon its characteristics. The storage temperatures include cool, cold, refrigerator, freezer, etc. You may refer USP 659 chapter for more accurate definitions of various temperatures. The standard can be stored at room temperature or ambient temperature which is around 25 degrees when there is no specific storage condition prescribed on the label of the container. 
Generally, the room temperature means it is around 25 degrees Celsius. It is also important to store protecting from moisture, light, and excessive heat. Sometimes the prevailing temperature conditions of the room are considered as room temperature or ambient temperature. This approach is also prevalent. It is the temperature at the, the time of working in the laboratory. So, it is important to understand that all the standards need not be stored at very low temperatures, for example, 2 to 8 degrees Celsius or between 8 and 15 degrees Celsius, etc. Let us see how recertification of standards is done. Primary standards that are supplied by a regulatory agency need not be recertified. They have to be used within the validity. The compendial standards should be used within its validity period. It is not recertified by the receiving lab. Also, whenever a new lot is made available, the older version should be discarded. Secondary standards are recertified if necessary after the validity period by carrying out the identification test by IR and SA percent weight. Secondary standards which are stored carefully without any possibility of deterioration, it may be recertified for identification and SA by weight percent. RM standards are not recertified after validity period. However, if there is any requirement to use the same RM standard, performance test should be done for suitability in analysis. The shelf life, the validity period may be extended based on evaluation of performance data. Raw material standards are generally not recertified. If significant quantities of the standard were still available in inventory, it may be tested for its intended purpose by a suitable performance test. If the standard responds without any signs of deterioration or degradation, the shelf life may be extended appropriately. Let us see how the preparation of secondary standards is done. Depending upon the usage pattern, pack adequate quantity of standard for one month's usage in a vial, a clean, suitable bottle, seal airtight. If usage is more, larger quantities may be packed for such each vial. Seal tight to protect the standard from deterioration or degradation. Prepare 12 such vials for entire 12 months of the year. One vial per month is the strategy. This protects the standard from any potential accidental contamination. Label the vials as 1 of 12, 2 of 12, and 12 of 12 for protein usage. Labeling will be specifically assigned for the usage to one particular month. Prepare additional vials, one or more, to handle any exigencies, breakages, or supply to customers. This is for handling such situations. Label as spare vials as 1 of N, 2 of N, and N of N. Same strategy for labeling for identification purposes. Let us see how the consumption record is maintained. Maintain a consumption record of the standard with the details of lot number, batch number for which it was used, quantity used, balance available, date of expiry, etc. This is to establish the usage of standards appropriately. This is 
some sort of balance sheet of the reference standard usage. Record the details of incident and procedure to discard the standard if there is any accidental contamination or damage of the well. This is to establish that standard that is not contaminated is being under usage always. Record the details of lot number, expiry date, quantity supplied for any standard that was provided to your customer. This is also required as objective evidence that the standard was supplied to certain customer. Let us see other important points to note. Generally, the primary in-house standards are synthesized by R&D, supported by AR&D or QC. The API or impurities are synthesized by R&D and evaluated by AR&D. If the company is not equipped with necessary equipments for structure elucidation, it is done from an approved reliable outside laboratory. However, all the generated data by the external laboratory should be reviewed for accuracy by the internal R&D and AR&D teams. When a new lot of Compendial Reference Standard is obtained, the existing secondary working standard should be characterized against the new lot. However, if the earlier lot is still within the validity period when the new lot is in the market, the same can be used till it reaches the expiry date. The existing working standard or secondary standard should be compared with the new lot whenever it is official. If there is a customer provided primary standard, that is customer's in-house standard, it is necessary to obtain the evidence that the standard is characterized and certified. This is important. The customer who provides you the primary standard should provide evidence as a declaration that the primary standard is characterized and certified to its claim structure, purity and potency. Water content test by KF may be performed if the standard is hygroscopic or hydrated and when there is a requirement to report the result on an address basis. When there is a possibility for a change in water content of the standard and the result be reported in an address basis, it is necessary to carry out KF test every time. Residual solvent test is performed and standard if there is a requirement for reporting the result on dried basis. This is required to be done if the result must be reported on dry basis. I hope that the subject on handling of ref reference standards is understood well. Try to review your SOP on handling of reference standards and Revise to include these features, if not already part of your SOP. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.